Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 10 of Matt and John Make a Podcast. Um, we're already at 10 episodes already, Matt. Hard to believe, but um, this thing is quickly flying by here. You know? uh, yeah, it's been... It's it's been quick, it's been quick and it's been fun. Um, of course, um, on this week's edition of the podcast, we gotta talk about about our good buddy Antonio Brown because because he's always in the news every single week. So we're gonna be talking about 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 A B being e, being released by the Patriots and his tirade on Twitter, etc. Um, we're gonna be giving some thoughts on, on the Steelers' loss and some uh, uh, other things with them. Um, and also we are going to be diving in into into wrestling talk. Next week is a really big week for for professional wrestling. AEW starts up their the their weekly T TV show AEW Dynamite, and also SmackDown starts um with their Fox era um on Friday nights. But first, uh, we're gonna discuss our good buddy Antonio around here Matt yeah. um and and actually I, I was really mad about this because 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 like literally he got cut a day after that we aired that that we aired on la- yeah, last it, week's it's, podcast. It's tra- per tra- tra- tradition with Antonio yeah. Brown every time we talk about about him usually the next day something happens yeah. someone assume that, he I guess something yeah something's gonna happen yeah I'm I'm assuming that he's gonna do something stupid. So, so just pay attention to to his social to his social media accounts because because he's bound to say he's bound to say something. I mean, today even he was talking trash to to Eric Weddle and stuff. So it's just it's it's something new every 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 single day. But just going over for the the past week. So so the so the Patriots released AB I believe on Friday of. Uh, of like last week, and basically this came um, from when when he sent a group text to to another accuser of his and and Abby's lawyer, which which begs the the question: Why are you sending a group text to your um, to your accuser? I mean, any any sane person would just you know shut up. Um, and also um, Belichick um. You could tell, like, like he's getting tired of answering the same questions about AB every single week. Um, but I personally believe that this probably came f- from the very top. Um, and I, I also believe that uh, that with him, like, once something happened under under the Patriots' watch of him doing something stupid, of him doing something stupid, like he had to uh, had to. Uh, of them known that like there was there was zero tolerance but you know he, he just he seems to like want to dig his own grave every sing, every single week and then um on sunday he went on a twitter tirade um he claimed that 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 he was retiring because because of the because of the raiders and the patriots avoiding all of his guaranteed dollars although like e- e- even though there was clauses in those contracts where if the teams felt that that he was conduct detrimental to the team i believe that 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 all of those guaranteed dollars were null and void um so i i, I believe that that ab and his team are in the process of filing a grievance against those teams to get some of those guaranteed dollars back good luck with that um also risen house claims that 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 there are teams interested i would love to know which teams would want any part of this guy right now at this point now yeah you're and, not playing this season and also ab also announced oh he's going back to to school and there was the most hilarious <laughs> um Edit done. I'm not sure if you saw this, Matt. Where um, I post this on, on Instagram, where where basically um, AB's head is cropped on onto like Billy Madison's head, where I he just, where he's. I don't think I saw. That. Oh, no, that's, oh, that's great. Oh god, that great. it was glorious. Like, you have to check it out. But basically, um, he's going back to school, and of course, he posts all of this stuff on social media. Now, I believe that. That, well, well, like, first of all, no one is going to, is going to even 
how to disguise this this season at least until until his until everything with his like legal um stuff is get gets taken care of i don't believe any team will 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 touch him and i believe guys like guys like Schefter, um ian and Rappaport and and chris morris and chris mortensen have pretty much said the same thing that that as long as his legal troubles are in the air no one is going to even touch him um and you know, I don't feel sorry for this guy whatsoever. Like, no. you can only make a complete ass out of of yourself so many times. And despite how great that 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 he is, he's just a pain in in the ass to deal with every single week for teams. Like, like at a certain point, you just you just got to you just got to shut up and just do your job, which. You know, he just he lives um, in a world where 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 AB has special rules and where and where he doesn't have to follow those other rules. So um, I got and I got nothing much else to say on this topic. Matt, what do you have any thoughts on this on this guy here? I just hope that this is the last time we talk about him yeah, for a while. I'm, um, I, I doubt it. Yeah, me too. But he he's just not smart. You just got to st- stop posting every little thing uh, that you do on on social media. And it's getting him in trouble and it's coming back to bite him. Well, yeah, um, he even called, like, he made, he made light of, 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 um, of guys, I'm dirty, dirty laundry. We're talking about 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 him tweeting about Shannon Sharp between uh about Ben um and and in regards with them um, Shannon Sharp I would hope that AP would have done at least some some Google searches there because if he would have done so he would have known that with that um with that with that restraining order that was filed against him that was he was actually falsely accused and I believe that his accuser went in into jail for for a like few months for um for like falsifying a, a police re- report or something but 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 like basically the whole thing it turned out to be complete bs i, I mean like I, I swear like he just does not think be before he posts online he just like like it's it just amazing to me how how little that this guy can control his emotions on the internet you know he's a perpetual child he's a child He's it's like worse, a teenager. He's worse than kids, like kids, I, deal, yeah, kids yeah. I deal with in high school. It, it, it's exactly that. Like, I just, like. Because you, I don't know how, what half of them do. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I just, like, he's he's obsessed with being in the spotlight. And, like, now, like, he owes so much money to everyone else. Like, he's going to have to play just because, just, just, to, just to pay off off his debt now i mean like hell like he went to the oakland raiders and he somehow lost money <laughs> by going to the oakland raiders like i believe he was in the in the hole a a few a few hundred thousand for for how many fines that um that that the general manager mike mike mayock fined for so like it, it's just it's truly amazing how and, how he's done and how do you get to the you know you're terrible when you go to the Patriots and they don't want you. And t- because when, yeah. when they don't, when the Patriots don't want you, you know you're screwed up. And on, on top of that, now he he was bad. He, he was bad mouthing Robert Kraft. And I, 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 I mean, like I'm just like, dude, this guy like brought you in, and, and, and paid you like something. Like even gave you a few guaranteed dollars now. You know what? As much as I don't want it to happen, like deep down inside, I kind of want that evil side of me. I kind of want the Patriots to win the Super Bowl just so I can laugh that he, he's not on the team to win it and he can't get anything. I, I, I and he's not going to. I mean, right? I, deep down, like that evil twisted side of me wants to, for, wants them to win, but like that's one percent <clears> of me. 
I don't want them to see it. I don't want them to, to win again. No. And the Madden curse is real. Yep, the Madden curse is real. I mean, like which the- which scares me. If you're, which should scare you if you're a, a Kansas City fan because uh, well, so far Patrick Mahomes yeah, is on the cover. I, he is my golden ticket on my fantasy team. I I I need this curse John. to to not be real. He's gonna get year. hurt. He's gonna get hurt, John. Yo, know, with my luck. Honestly, they'll like. It's gonna happen. In, Maybe in like week one, that scared me because because too I, I was like, God damn the freaking Maddox. Yeah, because 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 um he got he got banged up in in the Jacksonville game. Maybe yeah, so. you might get lucky. Maybe it happens. Too much magic in was playoffs. used on. Magic was used too much. On uh, the curse was used a- too much a- on A B. Yeah. So it, it, maybe it takes a couple of weeks to uh, reload. So maybe at the end of the season, maybe bef- yeah. maybe before uh, after your playoffs are over. Yeah. So who knows? But yep. I, I feel like it's coming mm-hmm. s- eventually. Mm-hmm. Well, a team who's probably is not going to be going to the playoffs. I'm talking about our Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, yeah, they suffered another. Of loss um on on Sunday against the against the San Francisco for Forty Niners um I will say about this game the defense did absolutely everything that they could to to win this game I mean when you force five five turnovers you should you should win that game laughing away but to lose that game and just how ineffective that. The, quite frankly, that the whole offense was, and like I'm not pinning this solely on 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 Mason Rudolph, just because because that offensive line just got beat up. Like that San Francisco defensive line is no joke. Like Nick Bosa was just making owls was making big owls life living hell. Like I've never seen Al on the ground so many times in one game between him and D Ford and Puckner. Um, like those guys were just terrorizing the Steelers offensive line. But I mean, I also too the 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 play calling was also annoying me. Just like, I mean, like first of all, this team just cannot run the ball to to save their lives right now. Um, not to mention wide receivers ha- have been pretty inconsistent to this point. Although Deontay Johnson had had some pretty had, had some pretty nice plays and like Juju had that had that 75 yards it seems like they yeah it seems like they cannot get open no and um and I mean just yeah making optics making Rudolph look bad because nobody's open yep yeah and um and like like people were just terrorizing Rudolph I'm like guys if he if he has no time his receivers can't get open there is nothing that he can do and and two, when you have no running game whatsoever, you're putting so much pressure on a second-year quarterback to constantly make plays, like at every single possession, and that's tough. And but but with all that, with all that being said, this team had they had a lead in the fourth quarter, and James Conner once again just another costly fumble, like. I mean, like, I hate to say this about the guy, but, like, he has a major fumbling issue. I mean, you go back to to last year in the Denver game, like, he had a costly fumble there that cost him, that cost him the game there. Not, not the, not the de- defined play, mind you, but, but, but uh, one of those plays. So, I, 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 I mean... I mean, you gotta ask like if he cannot get it going. Like, do we see guys like Jalen Samuels more? Do we see do we see Benny Snell more? Um, Benny Benny Snell he 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 got some more some more touches this week more than um more than all all season to this point. So yeah, um, offense was really struggling. Defense played well for the most part, but like that. That fourth quarter was they were just getting gashed on the ground. Um, T.J. Watt played an amazing game. Um, 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 Heaven Bush he, he was better this week, and it was pretty mm-hmm. cl- clear once he was on the field. But like, but but, but like, damn, but damn, Mika. I was just about to say Fitzpatrick yep. was he was so noticeable. Like that guy's. 
playmaking ability is just he was everything that they that they thought that they were getting and um I still stand by even if this team goes 3 and 13 or 4 and 12 it was well it was well worth like giving up that that first round pick like I just he is such a great young d- defensive player I mean well, they'll be fine in regards with that um Matt do you have an, 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 anything to add from the game there um like you just said uh I really paid attention to uh Fitzpatrick he was very good again noticeable getting turnovers interceptions um but the offense i i think is is the bigger deal mm-hmm. um you had what is it four t- turnovers by uh five actually well f- it, earlier in the game oh yeah yeah four turnovers and by uh San Francisco, and you score six, six points. points. Yep, it's a story of the and game. They right got, there. they had, and we got two, and they got two off of us, and they got like fourteen or I'm whatever. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was it was at least ten. I know that much. Um, so that is um, just that that's that. It's where the game was. There's was your problem. One. Yep, was one if, and lost it. If if they would have scored, oh. Uh, Maybe at least fourteen. Fourteen off of yep. They can't win that game. Can't yeah. You can't guarantee. Yeah, well, be, fourteen. Well, because if you score in every every one mm-hmm. at least a field well, goal and two, but if, at least two touchdowns. If they would have had at least a two touchdown lead, that changes the whole game because because I don't know if you guys saw, but 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 with Jimmy G, he was struggling like in the first part in, yeah. in, in pretty much the whole entire game. It just like. It just they kept on just getting um the Steelers defense just kept on getting gashed and especially in that third quarter like they were just running up and down the field against them and that just that just set up that that play action pass where the the Steelers just keep on just getting terrorized by the play action I mean just just recall with the Patriots game I mean like guys were just streaming wide open so yeah a frustrating win but. But I mean, frustrating loss, or or, or sorry, um, frustrating, um, frustrating loss. Um, correction. Um, but I still don't think that the season is over just because a the AFC is really bad, <laughs> especially the a, especially the AFC North. Every team in the AFC North, l- in the AFC North, lost this this weekend, or um, or or, or like last weekend. And now we face the Cincinnati Bengals. We have the we ha- have the Ravens after that, I believe too. So hey, I'm um, there's two, a chance. There, exactly there's this a chance. This season is far is far you, from over, especially you, in the AFC. There is just outside of the of the Patriots and the the Chiefs. There is there are, are no other great teams. If if you win both those games somehow, uh, that what that's two and zero right division. Back in right two, back in it. 2 and 3 mm-hmm. and everything is looking exactly. way better. If you lose one of the two, not the end of the world, but it's not good, but no. if you don't win if you don't win any of them, yeah. uh season's over at that it, point. It, like you're you're playing for pride it, at this an, point. It's an absolute it's an absolute must win for us. You can't go oh, well, any division. You can't go mm-hmm. 0 and 2 in the AFC North mm-hmm. with these teams with the Ravens and Browns uh, specifically, and 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 like you know, I, I, I mean the only other team that I'm that I'm that I know for sure is a really good team are the Baltimore Ravens in this division. Cleveland are a bunch of pretenders in my opinion. That offensive line of theirs is just horrendous. I like and if if you look at their at their schedule for. The next four or five weeks, it is brutal. Like mm-hmm. they're like they're facing the 49ers. Um, they have they have they have Baltimore this week. I believe that that they have the Chargers. I um and I believe actually that they have Seattle too in that in in that stretch as well. There, so I, I mean, let me yeah yeah let me let me look that up. Um, read, read that they got the Browns. 
I probably you probably said that this week. Um, yeah. Um, Ravens. The Ra- Browns at the Ravens at the 49ers, <laughs> home with the Seahawks. Oh, Jesus. At the Patriots. Oof. At the Broncos. Oof. Which are zero and three maybe. Yeah. Um, home with against the Bills, which are surprising people. The three and zero. Um, Not- here's a here should be a win at home against the Dolphins. Should be. Home against the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Should at be. Arizona. That 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 stretch right there are games that they absolutely need to absolutely. Oh, and have. okay, two with the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Like the way the ESPN set up, it has mm-hmm. the Steelers up first and yeah. out of order, mm-hmm. but uh, Ravens and uh, Bengals. So so it's that little. It, um, this. It's the little month. stretch. Yeah. yeah, it's this this month. You need to get through pretty much October. Yeah. Um the rest of this month in October to just really see because it, it kind of eases the, up after. Yeah. But they but they could they could very they could very well be what 1 in 5, 1 in 6 after that stretch. Possibly. It's very possible. So they need to win I feel at least half of those games. To to stay in, in the thick of things because because too if you look at the Steelers schedule like because I believe that like five of their next six games are at home I believe and and there's a lot of there's a lot of games where they should win so if the Steelers say win four of their next six or something like that. Mm-hmm. you know they're it's it's, it's possible it, it, exactly stuff it like. I, I I know we're up. Everybody's all upset that we're on three, and yeah, it's not good. But like the AFC stuff in, sucks. <laughs> stuff in sports are weird. Yeah, exactly. Oh, can we uh, quickly? Uh, I I want to switch the baseball real quick. Okay. Um. One one second. Them. I, okay. I just wanted to give some brief thoughts on the Steelers acquisition. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I totally um, missed that. Yeah. yeah, so the Steelers acquired um a tight end from the Seattle Seahawks, Nick 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 Vanat. Um he is I believe a third-year guy out of Ohio State. Um basically the Steelers made this acquisition because because of their horrendous depth at tight end and I, I believe with 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 Vance, he is dealing with a shoulder injury, and they also put Xavier Grimble on injured reserve on top of that. So that was pretty much why why this was made. And the Steelers gave up a a a fifth round pick. Um, I have no issue with this whatsoever. Like tight end is like one of their biggest need positions. He's a guy who who has really really good hands, who can really block. It is a very big body. Like like he's exactly what they need he's a a like jesse james type of guy a big guy so you know i mean like it's it's a solid move i mean people are mad that we keep on giving away our draft picks but i'm like it's a fifth round pick like like i i I, these picks are going to turn have to turn into something exactly you gotta exactly like and to what are you gonna do you have no tight end exactly and two with the Steelers, they they still have four day two picks. They they have a um they have a second round pick, and they're probably are, are, are going to get a a a a comp pick from from the Jets um with the with with the with the bell sign, and they also have two they also have two fourth round picks right now. So, you know, I don't have any problems with them doing that. Um. I'm just the only thing I hate about this trade it was with um with this guy he's in the final year of his contract so I mean like they're going to have to pay him a a little bit in, in order to to keep him for next year but we shall see what happens all right man you can um okay, okay. so I guess keeping with Pittsburgh theme um because right now as we speak uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates are facing the Cubs, and yesterday the Cubs were eliminated, which is hilarious, by the way. Right, right. And right now the par- the Pirates are winning five nothing. So the- they're about to sweep the Chicago Cubs, and I believe that this would be 
the I believe the Chicago, the Chicago Cubs would then drop their their ninth straight game, which I believe is their most consecutive losses since 2012. Which, wow, like what happened? To and right Chicago? now we have for the Pirates, Joe Musgrove just just got through four. He's not given up a hit yet. Albeit, it's not the uh, full Cubs lineup. You don't have the heavy hit, hit hitters like, uh, uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Um, can't think. Um, um, is Rizzo still Riz, there? Rizzo's not in. Um, Brian's not in. Hmm. Uh, so uh, it's, 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 all, it's um, kind of like the ultimate Sunday lineup. You got Kemp, Hap, Garcia, Jesus. Caratini, Luke Roy, Bodie. Russell Amora Jr. in uh, Quintana for pitching. And uh, we have, you know, basically a uh, triple A lineup. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like and, the, um, the, the Pirates have had a triple A, a triple a and, lineup and for last possibly, month. Yes, possibly s- sweep the Cubs. Like that tells you just how bad that, the Cubs uh, have been. I totally like forgot. It didn't even notice how bad they were, and they got here. Yeah. Just like, oh, yeah. I I mean, like I didn't realize that either until I, I hopped onto Twitter last night, and um, one uh, of the of of the baseball writers tweeted out that 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 the Cubs um are dropped eight straight, which is their most their most losses um in consecutively since twenty twelve, and I gotta believe that that. That this is probably is going to cost some is probably going to cost Joe Madden's job here. Um, it's, and that's, funny thing, that's uh, funny, yeah. And funny thing about that, a organization that that holds its players and coaches accountable when they don't meet up to expectations. Another thing I can talk about. Oh um, yeah, and I, I'm going to get into that here. But the fact that that Clint Hurdle, Neil Huntington, and Frank Cooley still have their jobs. It's just it's such a tone deaf move by this organization that just continues to prove that they are not serious about about actually winning. They will throw out the the whole the whole PR campaign answer that like oh they are trying to win a championship blah blah blah. But I believe with their payroll they are are are, are what Matt around sixty five million or um seventy million. I believe that's where they're at. Something like that. And I believe that that the league average is over a hundred million. So you tell me why why there is such a big gap between between the parts and the league average, like like and and like relations with the fans is so bad right now. I, I, I mean, like, j- just look at the stadium shots. There is no one at these games. I mean, like, Matt, l- like, um, how how empty are these um are these games? You are there pretty consistently. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty sizable, right? Sizable, not the crowd. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. So, you know, I, I, it's it's not good. No, and like to me, if they really want to capture the Pittsburgh, um fan base back they need to completely just clean house like got um the um the 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 manager the the gm execs the whole scouting department get rid of all of, uh, of them like this team has just proven they cannot develop talent i mean like we look guys we look at guys such as gary cole austin meadows todd Tyler Glass now, who all three of those guys are killing it now. Um, Charlie Morton, like it's just, it's just guy after guy after guy, and it's it's so frustrating. And um, you know, it's just like to me, in my opinion, the Pirates are probably one of the worst ran, uh, of the worst ran <laughs> franchises um in in all of them sports. So, um, it's just. I'm very annoyed. I'm very, I'm very frustrated with just how things have just fallen from the, the past few years now. Like, they went from winning 99 games in what, in 2015? 98. 98. Oh, 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 no, sorry. Um, 98 games in 2015. 
um, to now they are what I believe they have what 60, 67 and 91. Yeah. So, so now they're at 67 wins now. Like, like, I, I mean, and like, as, as you look at the team going into next season, Tyon is going to be out for, for the whole season because, because of Tommy John, obviously they are, they are going to, to, to be needing a, a new closer next year for obvious reasons. And uh, and like you have to ask yourself who is the who is the open day st- um starter like I I really don't know I mean like um Polanco is a question mark um why Eric Gonzalez is still getting at at, at bats um nine game hit uh, straight or six game something don't even get me start, don't even get me started there I I mean it, it just there's so many question marks I mean like you will still have guys such as like Josh Bell like is there even a possibility that that he could even be be he traded in in, in the offseason which if that happens oh my god the oh god that that's that's going to be a disaster <laughs> um so a lot of question marks to say the least um what else did i put um i'm trying to think of anything else that i might have forgot um yeah so so Matt, do you have anything to add uh, after my uh, s- uh, slight rant? Yeah, after my slight well, rant. There. Just looking at, I'm just going to look at the playoff picture mm-hmm. right now. In the National League, it's pretty much decided who's who's all yeah. in. Um, we have na- in the National League, we have Atlanta winning the division. Mm-hmm. There were seven games over the na- Nationals, who are in uh, who've clinched. A wild card berth. So it's them and like Milwaukee, right? Milwaukee, or yeah, yeah. who's who's on a resurgence. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> they were, were dead in the water, and, and supposedly, and, and, and yeah, and then like I didn't even think, and I look, and now they're like, I haven't been keeping track. With, Another without, one without 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 Christian Yelich too on top of that, right? Which is and even more impressive. One game out of the Central with St. Louis. Leading that, mm-hmm. um, and then I believe one and a half out of the uh, top wild card spot, mm-hmm. and and you have the Dodgers who were all, who, who are like twenty games, <laughs> twenty one games in front of Arizona. Jesus Christ, uh, they have the best record in the NL with a hundred and three, hundred and three and fifty six, with a two fifty five run differential. Wow, um, so. Yeah. So, and and with that being said, I I still do not trust them at all, especially you. in the postseason. Like I think I give I give Atlanta a really good shot in representing the the the, the I, National League. The, I don't the trust the Nationals because they no, never no, do don't good. trust them either. And no. Didn't they clinch against the Phillies, which is hilarious? Yep. Yep. Sure did. Which is <laughs> I, um actually no um Philadelphia got Philadelphia got. E- eliminated by oh one of the by, two by, by the oh that's one. even that's you know yeah. that's whatever one of the two <laughs> yeah, things right um in the American League um you still have Houston uh, you get the, uh, Yankees securing the division in the East uh, with Tampa Bay in the wild card hunt Minnesota leading the clinch the Central with Cleveland. Still somewhat in the hunt. Um, Houston clinching the West with Oakland in the hunt for the wild card uh, thing. Uh, Right now it's Oakland half a game above Tampa Bay for the 1-2 and Cleveland one and a half back of Tampa Bay with, what, four games Mm -hmm. to go if I'm doing math right. One, two, three, four. Yeah, or whatever. So Cleveland's a possibility. Um, so yeah, it's more stuff to be decided in the American League. But um, yeah, I mean, like, just I don't know how you bet against. I mean, like, I mean, Yankees again. Yeah, I mean, like Yankees, Houston, Houston. Like, to me, the winner of, of the World Series is coming out of the of the, of the. American League, just just between Houston and and the Yankees, that would be a great NL- ALCS. Not to if that makes 
makes it there. And two, with teams like with the with the with the Indians and the Twins and the Athletics, like those are really. I mean, like, because I believe. Because I believe with the A's, they have like what? 95 wins. 95 wins. <laughs> 95. It's like, 90, it's like the Pirates in 15. 95 wins, you're not winning division because Houston happened at 104. Exactly. Like, it, it's just like the, just the American League is just such a better. A in in better the Central, league. you have Minnesota, Minnesota and Cleveland. Cleveland has 93 wins, five and a half out. Wow. <laughs> Oakland, not, not even better. Oakland, again, 95 wins, nine games out. Houston. Tampa Bay, ninety-five wins, seven games out. Incredible. It's those divisions are top-loaded mm-hmm. and just have a breakaway. Um, I mean, it's just it's just incredible, just like just how deep um, that the American League is, and somehow the most com- competitive, like always, division in the National League is the Central Division. Mm-hmm. The two tops are one game away out, and Cubs, well. Mm-hmm. Or seven and a half out, but yeah. you know they're out. But mm-hmm. still, yeah, yeah. there's like actually three teams that were. Central is the only one with three teams, within. Less than double digits out. Yeah, everybody's either one, two, and then bye. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it, it, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, if I had to pick a World Series right now, I think I'm going with Atlanta versus Houston. Um, or that's kind of the series that uh, I'm hoping for. I'm sick of seeing the the Dodgers in the World Series every single year. Um, I I mean, as a Pirate fan, I can't pull for that just because it's St. Louis. I but, I don't uh, trust anybody in this vision winning at all. No, I, I, but with Houston's uh, rotation, I I, I I mean, too with them, you have Garrett Cole, Verlander, and Zach Greinke. <laughs> As your top three starters, like that's it's just insanity. And and two with with Garrett Cole is having by far his best season statistically. I hate you, Neil Huntington. Um, like to think they were trying to they were trying to make this guy a two seam pitch to contact hitter, and and he strikes out over three hundred batters this year. Just completely abandoned his two seam fastball. Just embraced his four seam fastball and is just whiffing guys in, and like his secondary stuff with his slider and everything is just it's filthy and man like Houston is such is such a a juggernaut right now um but um I if I had to pick a team right now I'm definitely leaning towards the towards the Houston Astros um winning the World Series again for what the the second time in. In the last three years, right, mm-hmm. or or second time in like four years, so yeah, they're they're just they're a re really well a very a very well a very well ran um franchise. I mean, they're just they are a pleasure to watch, and I'm super jealous of of those of those of those Houston fans because they put out a winning team virtually every single season. Now, I mean, it's. It's something to behold for sure. But um, Matt, do you have anything else to add in regards with? with no, I think we can we can move on. Okay, so we're going to touch a little bit on the Penguins here. Um, the season is starting up next Thursday, where actually Matt and and I are going to be at the game when they're facing the Sabers. Correct. You are correct, sir. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is going to be a little di- different year for the Pens. No. No more on Phil Kessel. Um, he was traded to to Arizona. He is reunited um with his former coach um Rick Rick Tockett. So um, a much a much a much younger team now for the Pens. Um, I'm hoping a more competitive team on a like nightly basis because I know from from last year it was they were really inconsistent last year, like a. Uh, like and you could just tell, like uh, especially um from from Coach Sullivan, he was just frustrated, and you could just tell, like with him and Kessel, it was just con- a constant battle. And um, if you and um when we talked on the podcast a few weeks ago, um from that piece in the Athletic, um 
from Rob Rossi just kind of detailing of just how bad things were with a like Kessel and Solvin and and also Gino. Um, you just hope that going into this season that that the that they did that the distractions are completely gone now. Um, that 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 with Gino, he's coming into this into this season in the best shape that he's ever been in, and is poised to have have a have a MVP an MVP like season. I still believe that that this team is still a Stanley Cup contender. Um, I still worry about their blue line. Um, but um, by by the by the looks of it, Matt. Um. Um, Jack Johnson looks to be on the bench, and um, also um, Rob, and also Rob Rossi also talked up about that in the Athletic. Because if you look at the Pens' um, defense now, and this is who I figure are, are going to be um, their 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 six here between 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 Latang, Brian Dumoulin, Eric Gubranson. Um, Marcus Pedersen. Um, you would think that um, or I'm um, Justin Schultz. So at that six, maybe maybe you are flipping between Rico Law and and Jack Johnson and Chad Ruedel. So and um, there's also been a lot of talk within the past uh, few weeks about Jack Johnson being traded. Um, which I honestly, if the, if 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 you or if you are JR, I think you absolutely need to see if if you can get that contract off off uh, of your books there. I mean, it was just a terrible sign, and everyone knew it at, at the start. But but uh, I mean, and and even a part of me thought that that since he's in um in our system, that he's being um coached by a Sergei Gonchar um I felt like that and and just being in this winning atmosphere that like that would hopefully we would put him in the best positions where he wouldn't be ex- as exposed but Matt as we saw last year I mean it, it was it was pretty pretty rough watching him out there so um so um, do you have anything to add um as we go into yeah, this season no, I um another thing I want to keep keep an eye on is the play of uh murray Mm -hmm. um i know last year he was also really inconsistent last year too i mean blue line didn't help it didn't help with him but that's what i want to see does he have a little bounce back year um that's going to be big for him um yeah that's another key that I'm, i'm i'm a little iffy at i'm not saying he's going to be bad or whatever no um i mean it wasn't bad last year in the ski in the grand scheme of things and like on top of that he was just hurt all yeah. season like like he would have a really good stretch and then and then he would have some some mm-hmm. sort of like nagging injury it's just he needs above about i mean outside of gino did, he needs to stay healthy this year was it that was it this past year did, did he have a death in the family no, I or believe that the year before. Yeah, yeah, that was the year before his, his father um his I father tragically passed there. Yeah, so maybe after a year hopefully mm-hmm. he's uh better. Uh it's going to be an interesting season. Yeah. Um can't wait next week. It's a big it's a big week. It's it, it, it is a really big week, but b- before we get into the wrestling talk um, I just wanted to touch on um, hit oh. football, huge huge win oh, 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 over central over central Florida man. Yes, yes. I mean, um, they almost pitted, but they didn't uh, pit. I, I, they didn't complete the pit. I, th- I thought that they were going to complete the pit because they were up what twenty one nothing. Twenty one nothing. Completely, the offense just was just completely and utterly worthless. Um, and then. And then, like um, you know, in the fourth quarter, um, they just they they stayed in the game and they got they got um they got some key stops in the fourth quarter. Um, and the old the old um Philly special, but now known as, as the Pitt special in this in this case, um, Kenny Pickett catches 
the game winning touchdown. Um, and now Pitt is sitting pretty good right now. They are now two and two going into conference play. Um, I think it's it's a really good chance that that this team could win eight or like nine games. Um, so hopefully. yeah, I'm hopefully very very um optimistic as we head into uh um in, into conference play. Um, now I'm Matt. I know that you wanted to talk about Kevin Feige here, so I'll let you um talk. Yes, a little bit about um, that. I think the news broke uh, yesterday. Um, actually, some recent breaking news. That Kevin Feige has been um, tasked or hired to direct a new movie, but just not any other movie, a new Star Wars uh, film. So that is interesting. You may know, again, obviously know Feige from uh, obviously Marvel and the. Uh, do I have to somehow edit your swear word under your breath? Um. Yeah. Like I just realized uh, that. Oh God. Damn it. And maybe not. Maybe nobody will hear it. Um. That's what she said. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho. Kevin Feige. Um. Yeah, he's doing uh, doing a. Uh... Now the thing I'm not sure about is is this going to be a new trilogy, and or is just one of the uh, I guess standalone uh, film. Um, I got to read this here. Now, I'm that's kind of excited. Um, I mean, he's done. Great things with more with the Marvel franchises. Um, I I just it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him uh, with the next I guess next movie if it's a new mainline movie. Uh, it, it it should be interesting. What do you uh, what do you what do you think? Um, I'm more in a wait and see sort of thing right now. Um, yeah. Just because we don't really know t- too many details right now, um, but I-, I mean, hell, anything involving Kevin Feige, I'm, I mean, I- I'm going to be interested in. So, uh. yeah, I, I'm. Nobody said that there's going to be a new, new movie or new a trilogy or episode. Would it be, would it be ten? No. Yeah, it, it would be yeah, ten. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be uh. At, again, interesting. Um. So yeah, that kind of broke yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Yeah, that was a quick little. Yeah. Update. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. Well, next week is a big, big week. Okay, this in, is my, in my my segue that didn't yeah, segue. Yeah, good. yeah. Yeah. We had some other things there, but um. But yeah, um, this is probably going to be one of the bigger wrestling weeks, and how probably the start consistently of wrestling just being, being being more like mainstream as far as as like wrestling being on a TV, um, because now AEW starts up their 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 weekly t- TV next week, um, NXT pretty much essentially has a an an, an NXT take. Oh, over card next weekend. Limited cor- in, uh, in yeah. commercial interruptions. Yep. And um and SmackDown um and SmackDown begins with their with their Fox deal next Friday. Um, but um uh, let's go over NXT right now. So basically this week we're just building up um to to um for their for the big show next week going up against AEW. And if anyone tells you that 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 they don't view them as as competition hell like they even they even say on numerous occasions limited commercial interruptions like how many times did did they say did they say that man i lost count exactly so now we have uh, well i'll just go over the things that that happened this week um overall the show i felt was 
honestly kind of passable. I mean, but but we did have um two really good I matches. Didn't, I didn't mind it. I, 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 I mean, like it wasn't a terrible show. It's just like a lot of the stuff that that happened. I quite honestly just didn't care about. Um. And I, I, I still feel like that that this is one of the issues that I have with NXT's weekly TV is just they don't have, in my opinion, I feel enough storylines where they where they run on, on a weekly basis. I feel like it's just too, it's like matches. It's just strictly matches. Like I just would like, and, and I and I said this last week, I just wish that we had some more segments, like whether it be interviews or like or backstage segments with like with like regal or something like just to like kind of break up the show and balance it out a little bit but um but um we had a really good match between keith lee versus dominic die by die jack akovich um this was i mean your typical your typical match between these two guys like they just the athleticism, especially by Keith Lee, is just it, like there. There is not too many guys who are six three, three hundred and thirty pounds who should move like that, Matt. I, I mean, like uh, he's a he's a very athletic big boy. He's a very athletic big boy, and who has so much personality um, and c- charisma. I mean, he to me has star written all over him, and it's still a, a mystery to me as. Why, why NXT has and Triple H has has not done anything with him to this point? Because uh, I believe that he's been signed for almost two years now, or or at least a full year now. So I mean, I'm hoping with them going two hours now that that we'll start to see him a, a little bit more being involved in more bigger angles, whether it be against against like Roderick Strong or or whatever but i would like to see him involvement but um but uh, but like um he wins against against die against uh, against die jack just a hard hitting a hard hitting match big like, man match like it, it just it was it was a very physical like these guys just beat the hell out of each other and if i had to guess they will probably have their probably their their deciding their deciding match i would suspect at the at the next takeover um because i believe they are at one win a piece plus a like no contest, which that was back, I think at least like six months ago or something. So, so I feel like that's probably where they're going there. Um, honestly, this ha- I mean it's been a really fun feud. Um, I'm hoping that we get some good build up here, like some more some more video packages and and some interview time with these guys because I would like to know who these guys are mm-hmm. and because because to me we really don't know who these guys are right now because we just have seen them wrestle and while they are really good in the ring i would like to see some more character development with both of these guys here um any thoughts on the match there um there mad yeah like i said it was i was really impressed with keith lee um before this before nxt went on the uh went on USA I really didn't watch weekly um, just pretty much the takeovers and the video the great video packages would um, get me up to date and I was invested in the storylines mm-hmm. um, I I hope that Keith Lee gets more TV time going uh, forward now with the the not sore not war but war with AEW on Wednesday nights um, he's a, a he could be a good uh, mm-hmm. key piece, yep. um, because look at him and he look at that size of that man and he's doing moon salts from the uh, second rope and it's a just, man <laughs> he's a man he's a man just incredible athleticism mm-hmm. athleticism, um, Di, Dijakovic I, I probably butchered that, but um, I really never saw him uh, yet, but he's impressed me. I'm not sure if you recall this or not, but um, but we actually saw him at a like a at a Ring of Honor taping. Did we? Yeah. Um. He had. No, yeah. That. Um. He had an incredible match uh, against uh, against Marty Skrull a few years ago, where they beat the hell out. out, out I can't of, remember. Yeah. Um. But like, yeah, 
I've been high on him for a while now, but I mean, but you could tell like he he really struggles with the interview part of um right now and I believe that's probably what's holding him back right now I mean like I mean just from a physical standpoint I mean like he has all of those tools there but but he really does struggle on the mic where I mean like hell that's where I feel I feel that a mouthpiece for him wouldn't be a bad idea like I mean like in the, and that's and that's like a, a, a another thing like I have so been for so many years for for implementing for implementing managers um in wrestling just because 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 not everyone can be um snow cold steve austin hulk hogan or or a rock like you know you need someone who can talk to to help some of these other guys who are not quite as comfortable so um but um but uh, but the other big thing that happened on the show was was we had a number one contenders match to f- um, to determine who will face Adam Cole next week, um, between 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 Matt Riddle versus um Kill and Dane, this was a war, um, a street fight. This went on for a good for a good twenty minutes. Um, these guys were essentially battling, s- similarly to to last week, all around the arena. Um, and after after a, a after after a winner was in decide was in decided last week, Riggle wanted to add on a stipulation to make it all the more important that that there would be a decided the winner was with was that the winner would face Adam Cole for the title. And and, and um this was really good, really, really fun, and the absolute right guy went over Riddle, um he 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 taps out um Killian Dane and will face Adam Cole next week and then Adam Cole came down <laughs> trying to talk some trash to a former to a former UFC fighter um basically he got into Riddle's face Riddle got him um into into and into an, an arm bar and and Cole was arm tapping bar. arm bar and um yeah Cole was tapping a lot so uh yeah, almost immediately yeah, almost immediately so now the stage is set for next week they and nxt has three title matches not one not two but three title matches um going up against aew they're bringing out all the guns f- for this you you have um you obviously have um shana baszler versus 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 candace versus candace array um for the nxt women's championship you have the the NXT tag titles between the Undisputed Era versus the Street Profits, and and um, as I mentioned previously, you also have Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle for the NXT World Title. Um, now, just like sort of predictions here, um, I would not be surprised if they went with with Riddle here, um, just to kind of, um, I mean like. Especially now, since now, especially they're going up up against a a e w every single week now. Um, I do feel like that we could be seeing title changes more. That we could see title changes more um frequently um on on their TV. So I think I'm slightly going with 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 Riddle right now. But I do think that the un, that the undisputed era is going to retain, and I also believe that that, that Shayna will also retain her title. Um how are, are you feeling um about, about these matches? I, I I I feel Cole might retain since Riddle got the upper hand if you're doing traditional booking. Yep. Um I know you probably want to have a title change and out of the 3, I think yeah, out straight of those profits three have a better shot of winning which but I don't think they will. No. Uh, I don't either. I I wouldn't I well, wouldn't shock me to nobody ch- things change. Mm-hmm. But I feel like kind of have to I feel, feel like, like they would because because to because to why would you have like th- three right. title matches and not but at and the not same time and, and, hands. right. But I I feel like 
to contradict myself, I feel like Riddle could win. It wouldn't again shock Which me. Which I feel that he should win because up uh, until this point, Riddle, I don't believe has been pinned yet. Um, I could be wrong yeah. about that, Ooh. but but um, but like he's been it, booked. He's been booked very very strongly since he's been and and it's it's the, possible. Yeah. I mean, I I. Me picking Cole is not like mm, yeah. you're wrong. No, but, but I I think if Cole if Cole does win, it's either by DQ or or or, or like he just barely escapes um away from his life. So that's kind of how I see mm-hmm. how how he would win. But yeah, um, NXT is going to be it, it uh, would be interesting to have mm-hmm. Cole the pretty much the leader of Undisputed Era. Mm-hmm. Lose and everybody else keeps their title. Yeah. That's going to be it. That would be an interesting dynamic. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, like I'm, I, I'm I'll, not, I, I'm not dismissing it. Um, just because I, I can, okay, d- I can lean to Riddle winning. Yeah, just because of that added competition with AEW. I think that that if you are if you are going to do th- three title matches, there better there better be at least one title change there. Yeah, at least I'm, one. I'm so. convincing myself Riddle's going to win after I talk out loud. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and the only, um, the other thing that happened, um, we got, um, we got, it got more, more build up between between Kushida versus Walter. Um, there was a six man tag match with, um, with Kushida and the and the recently reunited Breezango Mats guys, um, versus Imperium. I mean the match itself. Honestly, I was not really engaged. To be perfectly honest, um, I'm still trying to warm up to Imperium here. Um, I mean, like I the, like their look. They yeah, they have a very interesting, a very interesting look, and they are badasses. Um, but like I was just, I was not really engaged in this match here. Um, but but the, but they did tell a a really good story here, so. I mean, I liked it, but I wasn't necessarily blown away. So, yeah, that was NXT this week. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, then on to SmackDown. Um, SmackDown wasn't not not to me noteworthy things happened on the final SmackDown. Um, on um on U. I say this is obviously the 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 final SmackDown um before they go onto Fox, but basically the only the the only the only noteworthy thing that I um took a, away from this was Kevin Owens versus versus Shane is now going to be a ladder match with a contract or termination papers um um above the or um hanging in the ring and basically whoever whoever wins that um. The opposite guy is getting fired, so uh, I definitely believe that this is probably where where Shane is going to get fired. Is going to be stepping away because I do believe that that with Fox they want more of that sport, um, uh, uh, that sport presentation. I and I I just don't believe that Shane is going to be within their plans unless uh, uh, unless Shane is going over to 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 Monday Night Raw then. Which I don't think that's going going to happen either. I I just think it's time for Shane to step away. Let's like just get let's just go away from these heel authority figures. Like it's, it's one of the most overdone concepts by by this company between that and like firing angles and I mean huh, I, I mean how many times have have we seen that there, Matt? So um, Matt, any, any thoughts on SmackDown? This um. Week? I'm I'm interested to see that ladder match. I think um, they can do um, mm-hmm. some crazy stuff, and I believe too that's 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 on SmackDown yep. next, next week. week. Yeah, yep, right. Which is a which is a uh, loaded show. Yeah, already. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it looks like probably maybe next week um, we're gonna have maybe uh, Daniel Bryan. And Roman Reigns team up against Rowan and mm-hmm. Luke Harper, and I'm still sticking to my to my prediction that this is eventually is going to lead 
to um to to this going to to Roman versus versus Dan Dan and your Bryan. But I will say this though, and I did not really think of, of, of this map. October, I, I believe, is like Connor's care month, right? Um, for the WWE, right? Yeah. Which something I, I didn't think about too. Who was the most central figure um with with Connor's did Daniel Bryan care exactly so now now when someone said that I was I was like ah this probably explains why why they turned them baby face so I mean like I I I want to say that's that's where they're going but now I'm not as confident in saying that Daniel Bryan's going to turn heel and honestly probably when Smackdown hits next Friday it, I think I think that they're probably are going to keep on face because of that. And it all, and all right depends there. on, I guess, we have to see where everybody shakes out after the draft. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. the big, I think that's the big waiting game mm-hmm. right now. That I think once everything is set, and I, not to, I can play devil's advocate here, then, okay, you have permanent rosters now. Yeah. You got it. USA and Fox, mm-hmm. then you could be like, okay, let's go. We have we have a roster. That we have <laughs> yeah, like I'm like this wild card rule just needs to freaking die. I mean, I I, I hated the, the this thing when when they introduced it what back in a couple months ago. Yeah, in back summer. back in, in June or whatever. But like it just like you you just don't know who's like who is supposed to to be where. It's just like if you're going, especially too with like Fox, I'm sure that they said, "Hey, we," they said, "Hey, we want our own guys," mm-hmm. and I think and for how big of a roster that they have, there is no reason why they should not have have affiliate shows um for 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 wrestlers. Like, um, I I do wonder if they're going to switch over Daniel Bryan over to 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 Raw because you figure, um. That with Seth, um, is and Roman and and Lesnar, they're probably over are all going over to SmackDown. You would think, um, because I mean, like out, I mean, unless something crazy happens, I, um, Wyatt or 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 Z Fiend, um, is should absolutely squash some Seth, and we'll talk about that shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know what we should do? I was thinking about this. What's that? We should have. Our own little draft, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We should do that. Um, for next week because I believe that they, that that they don't start the draft until the SmackDown. Th- yeah. Until and it's Friday. Yeah. Well. Oh, well. Well. Actually, they. I believe they don't start the actual draft until the following week. Actually. So. No, I think it's on the first. Th- I thought it was on the first show. No. Um. It's like October eleventh. I believe. Really? On. The, uh, 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 on the SmackDown um, show, but I mean, like, I think with SmackDown now going over to Fox, man, I don't think, I don't think that there's any doubt now that SmackDown is the clear A show, the clear A show now, um, for the WWE, which I never thought that I would ever, ever say, but Fox, um, is just it, it's a game changer, and you know we're seeing it, we're seeing it, and now like. During NFL games, college games, like like SmackDown is plastered everywhere. WWE programming is everywhere, and I laughed. Oh yeah, it is eleventh. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I thought so, but I laughed when um at the at the Vikings game, Rey Mysterio is in the crowd. <laughs> oh yeah, and like Mark Slayer. <laughs> like he 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 was like talking about his back mask and called him and called him oh it's like it's like nacho it's like nacho libre I, i'm like oh my God. i'm like oh, okay guys that's a guy who doesn't watch wrestling no i'm like i'm like okay we get that not everyone watches wrestling but you would think that that the people that the execs at fox would have would have like a memo sent to these people like hey when you're talking about this and hyping it up. Mention this. Do not say Nacho Libre when in regards to Rey Mysterio, who is one of the most um, recognizable luchadors ever. Like, 
like when you think of like when you think of of, of like of like luchadors you think of ray of of ray yep. mysterio so uh, i mean like it, it just it, that just that just looked really bad on fox's part um I, I mean like i found it funny but i know that that there were a lot of people really mad and annoyed about that um it's just it just comes down to and like i get not everyone watches watches wrestling but like just you know fox could could have j- just said hey guys like this is what needs to be said cover it hype it up do not do not say do not say not not to libre, libre. <laughs> okay jack black oh, oh, yeah, ex- exactly um but and like even too with like with with baseball like those Baseball fans and like writers or whatever were so mad at Braun Strowman being at that like um I, I believe he was talking to you Keith Oakley yeah like I th- yes especially that dude um because I believe he was at the Milwaukee and Chicago games yep. or, or something or like Saint, that I think it was St Louis and the Cubs mm-hmm. and, and these baseball fans were getting so butthurt I'm like guys Fox is paying the WWE one point five billion dollars. For the next five years, I don't care with who's talking. Like, honestly, God, l- like watching the game. Who, l- like, who cares? Like, it's uh, like, oh, why is he there for this, for this, for this, uh, for this, uh, a big sport that they're talking about? I'm like, it's it's business. Like, when you are paying someone as much as Fox is paying the WWE, they're going to hype up the hell out of out of them at every single major sporting event whether it's college f- football the nfl major league baseball hell even when college basketball starts up they're going to be hyping the hell out of them there and I, I believe too that 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 this year that the super bowl is actually on fox this year so don't be surprised too if they hype up during the the super bowl as well there which i'm sure that i'm sure that with like but like Vince is going to love that. There's so. ads, ads. He's buying that. Well, I don't think he has to buy ads. No, you know he's 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 in like business with them right now. So, so yeah. Um, the Fox era begins begins next weekend. Um, we obviously um Kofi Kingston versus versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE title, which I believe I will I will be stunned if if Brock is not the WWE champion especially with the start of this Fox deal so we got that we obviously have Shane versus versus Kevin Owens which I believe that this is where Shane will uh, will lose and will be fired and will go away for a little bit um is there anything else that's, that's being hyped up or or or, or, or yeah there's the uh, um I'm Roman and Daniel Bryan versus. Uh, I don't think that's been officially announced. It's uh, oh, okay. I, as I as as, as far as I know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And then you have uh, Sasha and Bailey versus the four uh, for, versus Charlotte and uh, Becky. Yeah, I, I could care less about that because because they just hit this what what like two or three weeks ago. So I mean, I, I mean, think they're doing it. I think they're doing it again because of yeah. potential new yeah. audience, and that's the yeah. there, there's your four big females. And I mean, like, and to um, speaking of, of the women, there, like, they have been plastering Becky all over with the Fox, um, with the Fox. Up. I, I mean, she's it's getting, she's getting drafted. I mean, it's pretty clear Becky is their is her top is her top woman outside of them Charlotte right now. Um, like, uh, uh I mean. It's, uh, I, I, I mean, Sasha is still there, but like you can just tell, like compared to Becky and Charlotte, she she's like third now, and like Bailey's just fourth. I mean, uh, yeah, like Bailey is. I still like the. I still like uh, Hill ba- uh, 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 Bailey. I I want it's, to it's like different. it, but, but the problem is too. Her character is literally there. Has nothing has changed outside of her of her getting a little bit. Yeah, Outside of of her being healer, she still has the same I, I, exact music entrance, which which attire. which uh, which could be good if they play into the just there's potential there. I I I see potential of 
being for kids, but not really doing kid like you can do. I, there's potential there if you write it the right way. There's little Maybe. stuff that I I like where they're what they're doing, but they can do a lot more. I just think that like whenever someone turns that, and and not with every single one of them, but there's too many cases, especially in the WWE, where when someone changes character. They are. They have the same exact ring attire, same entrance music. They're kind of acting the same outside. They are trying to be either either more aggressive or like more heelish. It's just I would like I, to see a little bit, you know, something's a little bit different. Like for example, like back in the day, um, when Hogan turned um, at Bash at the Beach in '96. He came out was a completely different person, and and yes, I I know we are, are are comparing Hulk Hogan to to Bailey here, even even playing field. But but it, 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 but the point being is like when you change characters, when you change characters like that, your whole your whole persona, in my opinion, sh- should change. I mean, I mean the uh, uh, other guy who was really known for that was um, Stink. Um, when he started his his crow persona from um from from surface thing, so I mean like I just would like to see to see more of that incorporate when someone turns um so but that's kind of how I feel. Matt, any more to add about SmackDown or no? Well, I think we, we can move on to Raw. Okay, when you not Raw, um yeah, I'm not going to lie. This was a pretty hard show for me to sit through. Um, I had this on. On, on on mute a lot, <laughs> but I will say this though: Z Fiend is easily. I mean, and we say this every single week. He's the best thing that the, that this company has going right now. Like, um, and like, I will say though, as good as he's been, like, like just the character assassination of Seth uh, Seth Rollins just continues. Like, anything outside of him not getting. Sc- Quashed at hell in, in a, a cell. I feel like is doing is doing the fiend the fiend a complete injustice here. Like, if you're going to do this, like, like um, the fiend needs to go over strong. Like, like I'm talking, I'm talking like Lesnar over Cena from from SummerSlam 20, 2014 sort of strong right there. So, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, that's what I'm hoping that we get there. Um, other things that happen here, um, Carmel is a new 24 seven. It happened. Champion. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got a we, women and, um, mm-hmm. and even truth was, <laughs> was confused, was upset. And he starts celebrating yeah, with yeah. her. Um, um, it kind of gives the, uh, catering women something to do mm-hmm. um like it could help build people look at um just off the top of my head look at maverick do you know who i want to win the 24 7 title now who maverick's wife <laughs> it's quite possible now <laughs> quite possible because i saw on, on her um instagram she was like well if 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 you want something done you got you got to do it you got to do it yourself I'm yeah, like, um, and I, I absolutely feel that that's where they're going. <laughs> yeah, I think. Wait, um, Carmella posted a, a a picture of her and Truth Corey. Corey. Oh god, this was two days ago. Oh god, um, and uh, with her and the, they're there in the back, and he's looking at the title, and Maverick uh, comments, and I, I believe they used the Maverick in. Graves used to wrestle in England what Maverick said here to one of these fans mm-hmm. um, he goes after all these years I'm still doing the job to Graves <laughs> ah. and he goes and he I think responded to somebody he goes I used to wrestle him multiple times in England in, in our younger days he won every match I, I, is he talking about like he's jobbing out because of Carmelo but I, yeah the, the... So, like his wife's not I was like, um, hey, dude, um, your wife, your wife is pretty damn hot. Why don't you right. consummate the freaking marriage there? I right. mean, so if you're here, Carmella is a 
world champion. And since my husband could have good things to do, <laughs> one, I have to take care of this myself. And Why is it not? I, I need to see the video. Why wasn't it playing? Oh, um, wait a minute. Ba basically, she's she was, making copies. Yeah, she's making copies and and putting posters everywhere um, so, <laughs> around the town. The oh, yeah, I guess she's. And I don't know where she could possibly be. Where is that girl? So, yeah, um, <clears throat> we got that. I hope. I, I hope. Hope to God she wins. Yeah, I, I laugh my I, butt I'll off. be kind of surprised if she doesn't. Um, and also the other major thing that happened was um we had a fatal five way to determine who would face Seth Rollins. Good on Monday Night Raw. Good match. Yeah. Um, and it turns out to be um Rey Mysterio wins the match and will be facing S Seth Rollins for the Universal Title um on I, Raw. I I hope they give that time bef before Bray Wyatt comes out. Um, because that has yeah. good potential there. Between I mean, the two. I absolutely feel that Seth is going to go over clean here. Um, and I definitely feel that after this match, the Fiend is going to scare Seth them less. Um, <laughs> Thank you for the pause there. Yeah. Less. Oh, no, I'll say it twice. <laughs> One. Uh, and so, um, so yeah, um, that was essentially all that really happened. I mean, we had some stuff that happened with Becky and Sh Sasha. Um, and Bailey and stuff, but nothing too too um too noteworthy there. Also had a match between Gable and Baron Corbin. That's still going on too. Um, so uh, another good match. Uh, yeah, uh, but I mean, as much as I hate Corbin, and I really do hate Corbin, and I still feel that he still sucks. But um, Gable is get is getting over now. I mean, he's getting more it's, of a reaction. It's do, it's he's doing the doing the job working I don't want to say perfectly but it's it's helping the crowd was getting behind him again Gable that is in the match well and this, this that sympathy for that character and one of these days he's going to win and hopefully he gets that pop well and, and the thing is too how they are building up Gable I feel that's how exactly how they should have been build, building up on Ricochet like just don't ha have him talk like like Chad is not a good interview or Mike talker and neither is ricochet like j just like small things l small things like that like 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 with Chad he's strictly gained over because of his wrestling the dude like it, it, it's, it's just it's very easy and that and easy thing to do heat on his opponent exactly because well people well, don't like Corbin it, exactly. and they went went Gable to win exactly so when he finally does get that victory, mm -hmm. which I I'm, it's, I guess it's plainly obvious that it, it should go well, there. and that's and, and that kind of just outlines a big problem. A big problem with this company is like they just don't have enough really good heels and the guys who consistently generate heat like like a Corbin does to help the um to help the baby faces in this company because. You know, I mean, like, I don't care how how good how good that 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 you are as a baby face. Like, if you don't have any, if you're not going up against any viable heels, I mean, it's it's really tough tough sledding. Like, the perfect example out of that I feel was like Becky Lynch, um, because after WrestleMania, she was pretty much in in like no man's land for I for a, a, a few months just because. Even though some some people, even though some people liked um Lacey Evans' character, like Hi. Matt included, I mean, like it was just it was far too soon for for her. I mean, like I, I felt like especially at that time, if they really wanted a viable heel, they screwed Lacey because they they should have made her win. Yeah, instead of losing three times in a row, I screwed her over. Well, and, and now they put her in a. A, a, a few with Natalia that I, which I, no one cares about. I don't even. I don't care. Natalia, when anything with Natalia, I I'm sorry. Exactly. She's she's good, but I like her present. When she talks, I I know. Uh, I still say I uh, I still say that after WrestleMania, they should have called up Shayna Baszler, and it should have been Becky versus Shayna because then you could you, you could ride that out for the summer there. And that right there would have kept Becky's um steam going, but but like once she started that that feud with 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 Lacey, like 
she lost a lot of steam that she had going into her, into WrestleMania because and it didn't help the old boyfriend dynamic. Yeah, God, that 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 month was was rough. <laughs> like, it, and and that's being kind. So, but yeah, she still has still stuff there. Mm-hmm. It's not completely gone. No. Yeah. So um. Yeah, and now as we go into another era um, with both Raw and SmackDown, we also had new commentators announced. Confirmed today. It was confirmed today um, that that's starting next week on Monday Night Raw. Um, the commentary team will be um, will be um, Vic Joseph, Jerry Lawler. Why why he's back? <laughs> I'll go into I I I, 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 I read know. something that it's maybe for a short time. Yeah yeah yeah. That's what I heard too. Maybe and to also get them going. and also. Dio John Madden. Madden. Oh, I'm D- sorry, Dio Madden. I'm who sorry. I believe is a former football player. Um, Brennan Williams. I I believe was, was his name. But um, but yeah, that is your um, is your. I haven't. Heard, I never listened to him before because yeah. he's on 205. Yeah, yeah. Live. He's been on 205 for like for the last month or so. But 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 um, he's on Raw for SmackDown. It it's just going to be a Two man booth with 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 Cole and Corey Graves, which I feel is perfect. And I, and I definitely I, feel I definitely feel this was def a definite Fox move here. And I, I think yeah. I've read somewhere too that a Renee is going to be like a special like correspondent thing coming in, which is fine. It, which is fine because she not to and it, because her and Booker T. Are, are doing doing that studio show WWE backstage on Fox or whatever channel I don't or FS1 yeah, maybe yeah FS1 on starting November fifth so that's yeah. gonna be interesting well and to it, that it, shows you how good I think uh Fox is has yeah. for Renee Young to yeah. do that she is she's um what the what what he like you FC is um for for like um. Like um for like Megan o- O'Levy um who um who we see constantly whether it's being a, as a host as being as as an interviewer like um like um she has a lot of, of strengths and I definitely feel she's probably really happy that that she is no longer on commentary she just never really felt mm. comfortable she's I feel. best as an interviewer studio thing yeah exactly that's where she shines. Where she shines, exactly. Say that five times. Which I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see how the studio show comes off of. I'll, I'll give it a watch because I believe it's going to be on Tuesday nights. Tuesday yeah. at eleven. Yeah. So, um, which there is no other shows on um, wrestling was uh, unless you are a pretty big, big impact wrestling fan, which I believe they start up. I believe they start up um next week at, as well on Access TV, but um. But yeah, uh, so we got that. Um, oh yeah, and as far as NXT is concerned, they are keeping the the same exact yep. people: Maro, Nigel, and Beth. also Beth. Um, mm-hmm. so like in that, in my opinion, it's by far their yeah. best their best commentary team. It's mm-hmm. not even close, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna be interested to see interested to see where what they do with Tom Phillips and Byron um, Saxton. I think I read today that that Phillips and Saxton are being um, backstage producers from what I um read but like some are like are like viewing that as a demotion um because I feel like uh, that, I feel I like know. I feel like that this I mean like I was shocked that they didn't put Tom over on like raw and like Vic Joseph jumped him because as much as I love Vic, I mean, like, I, I mean, hell, um, Phillips has been, has been on SmackDown now for a good three years now. You would think maybe that. they think he could be better just as a producer. Mm-hmm, yeah, maybe in the in the ear and just directing stuff. Maybe and that's confidence that, yeah. in them. And but but I've always been a real big fan of like Vic, of him. Vic yeah, Joseph, I liked him when he was on. He, he on brings Raw there. so much energy um, to to the commentary booth. Um, he calls out he calls out people's people's moves, 
correctly. He's not stuttering over his words. He's not forgetting the wrestlers' names. Like, I, I mean, like outside of probably Morrow, he's probably my second favorite. Um, my second favorite play-by-play guy right now. So, uh, yeah, I said last week. Yeah, he's impressed me a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. Um, it's, he, it's gonna be weird. Turning on Monday and not hearing uh, Cole or Graves yeah. or Renee, it's gonna be it's gonna be something to get used to. But we'll see how it, we'll see how it works. It's going to be a different uh, adjustment. Um, and like, I mean, like just, I mean, just for my schedule alone, like I'm gonna be watching wrestling essentially every single day of maybe the except week. Thursday, except for Thursdays. Well, no, take that back. Probably Thursday if you watch uh, NXT on. On, on DVR, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably be be watching that then too. So I mean, like, yeah, because you got let's go through. You got Monday Night Raw USA, Impact, Tuesday Access, mm-hmm. uh, Wednesday you have Eight. NXT on Fox. You have AEW Dynamite on TNT. Yep. Choose which one you want to watch, and you probably watch the other one the next day on mm-hmm. Thursday, yep. which is empty, mm-hmm. which is convenient. Friday you have. Um, SmackDown. You have SmackDown on Fox, and Saturdays and Sundays, like you know, the takeovers be... and pay per views. Exactly. Like it's just. Um, you have NXT UK. You have Ring of Honor. Honor. Two o five live. Two o five live. Which Fridays. which Friday nights now too. Which I don't know who'd be calling that now if it's still going on. Um, I, I yeah, I mean like they might still um keep like a. Vic Joseph there too, but yeah, like that's. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what. I mean, like maybe they throw they throw on Phillips over there, but I mean, maybe. But um, but uh, uh, you you have, um, a lot of variety. If you are if you are a wrestling fan, there should be something for you. Mm-hmm. If you don't want WWE, there's AEW. If you don't want and any of them. Uh, you've got you have NXT, right. you have Ring of Honor, you have Impact, right. and and in every little other small promotion that may do a show somewhere. Yeah. So you have variety. There is a mm-hmm. whole week of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of a a a W, we're gonna talk a little bit of what they got planned coming up here. Um, so basically, this these are the are are the matchups that are, are currently set up. Uh, we have, we have um, Pac, better known as Adrian Neville in WWE. He's going to be facing Hang Hangman Page, um, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks versus Chris Jericho and two mystery partners. Um, I believe that's probably is going to be LAX. There, I'll be, I'll be stunned if it's not those two guys. Um, and um, you also have Cody Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara. And also the start of the AEW Tag Team Tournament, um, which they released those those brackets last uh, um, last week. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm very interested to see how this is going to come off. I'm going to be interested to see how the production is going to be mm-hmm. um, with AEW. Um, and just the overall look of that sold-out crowd um, at the Capital One arena in Washington DC I think it's going to be a great look and this is something that I feel that AEW has a big um advantage over NXT it's just crowd size like um you know NXT they are wrestling in front of like 400 people and in, in this case with AEW they're going to be wrestling in front of what um 13,000 14,000 um at the um Capital One arena yeah. there so uh I mean that's going to look really major league right there. Um, so I'm very interested to see how that's going to go. Um, also going to be interested to see how AEW is going to be different from NXT because I don't feel like that they can be just strictly a pro wrestling show. Like I feel like that they need to incorporate storylines, which they already are. Because especially if you watch um, being the elite, um, if you've been paying attention paying attention to Kenny Omega he slowly is losing more and more of, of his of, of his senses and his mind right now um I'm also 
also interested to see um, how 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 like how John Moxley is doing because I believe that this will be his first appearance um, since he announced that 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 he was battling um that he was battling MRSA um in his elbow and everything looks to be all good with him right now so uh yeah um and uh yeah so um not much else to really add there um and oh and I, I'm hoping I'm hoping that they that they have Tony Schiavone on commentary for this um whether it's e e, e even just for a, a like match or two, just seeing Tony Sh- Tony Schiavone back on TNT is going to is going to be bringing me personally so much so much so much nostalgia. I mean, like who who would have ever thought that you know when WCW went under that that Tony Sh- that Tony Schiavone would be back on TNT calling calling professional wrestling. I mean, mm-hmm. it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, it's. Uh should be good. I I can't wait. This next week's going to be uh very interesting to say the least. Yeah, um, lots of debuts and mm-hmm. season premieres. Yeah, um, anything to to add there with AEW? Uh, no, that? I'm just I, I I expect some good matches. I'm just interest, interested to see um how everything comes off, how's their production, like how's the show work? Mm-hmm. Um how it goes up at, how it compares against NXT. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be a big talk. Yeah. Um, Thursday, uh, during the day, Thursday with the numbers, mm-hmm. can it get, does it hit 2 million? Yeah. Um, I'm just based on, off of what NXT has done. Um, I'm, am concerned because I believe that this week that, that, that they had a decline in, a, in, in, in a viewership because it's still north yeah. of a million. Yeah, like um, that concerns me just because and and this includes NXT too. I don't know why you, you would want to go head to head um when you're basically are going after the same exact a- audience there, but um so I mean like it's going to be, inter- it's going to be interesting and to see. And it's going to push both companies, man. They're going to have to put up put out a great show every single week like like if you want um, that can that consistent viewership every single week. You're going to have to put out a good show, or or people are, are not going to be watching. So, but um, but yeah, um, so that it, it's all gonna c- come down next um on next weekend. And the last thing that we'll touch on before we sign off here is um, it's being reported by PW Insider that that um that. John Morrison will be re-signing with the WWE, um, um, and I would would not be surprised if he showed up on SmackDown next weekend, but, or um, or like next Friday. Uh, this maybe sh- NXT, maybe they put him in NXT. Um, also possible, which I feel that would probably be better for him, but I feel like he'll probably be on the main roster. But this surprised me, um, just because I know that with John, like one of the main reasons why why like he left what was it back in 2011 yeah, 11 reading well, about it yeah it was just like he just got tired of that uh, uh, that horrendous road schedule mm-hmm. he said was just which is killing him um I wonder if he got well obviously he's probably he probably got a significant pay um, yeah if, and I gotta think that he probably had somewhat of of a reduced schedule um, I, I, that's why I, I would think maybe NXT because they're not yeah because um, as rigorous because honestly I felt that he was probably was going to sign with AEW I felt like that was probably where he was going to go just because of the road schedule they they are not running any house shows <laughs> yet um it's probably open up the checkbook in there. Yeah. Here. Yep. And, and uh, yeah, definitely. But I gotta think that that like he, he's not gonna be working as many house shows too. I feel that they probably offered him that, and that was pretty much it there. Um, and and the interesting thing is, um, he his wife is still working over at is still working over at um, Impact. So you gotta wonder if she will eventually be signed with the WWE when her contract. Is, 
is up there. So, mm-hmm. so that's going to be very interesting as well. But, well, Matt, I think we are about at the end of the podcast. Here. Yeah. So, um, would you like to add anything before I, I send I send us home here? No, I'm just. Uh, I know it's a lot of uh, wrestling talk and Pittsburgh sports. Uh, we keep saying this every week. We will get better. Uh, but next week is work in be progress. Yeah, work in po- progress. Next week is probably still going to be wrestling talk. wrestling talk. Uh, maybe not as much because we're going to do this early in the week, and um, so pretty much Raw would be d- over with. Yep. If we do, if we record this on the Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have a lot to. We're gonna have a lot to recap maybe in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, we typically um record the podcast on Thursday night, but but since but since Matt and I are going to to the Pennsylvania next Thursday, obviously we can't we can't with work record yeah. the podcast, um and and with our schedules and everything. Yeah, so and- so um so yeah um look so we're we'll probably record on, on, on Tuesday. I'm not sure. When Matt will will like drop that podcast, he might. Just, I'm, like, I think I'm still keeping it on Saturday. Okay, so so we'll still keep it on Saturday at at three p.m. So stay tuned for that and 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 like always, subscribe. Um, hit that bell when new stuff comes out. And um, uh, until then, guys, uh, I mean, like and comment, like and comment. Don't forget to like um, and comment. Yeah, There's yeah, help yeah, too. Yeah, like I was saying, like comment subscribe share this video whatever but uh, until then for for john and for matt signing off see you next week guys yep have a good one